The Path is a teaching series sponsored by World Missionary Evangelism. We hope that this series will deepen your knowledge and walk in our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's your host, John Cathcart. Welcome to our program today. I'm Walter Fletcher and with me is John Cathcart. John, as always, a pleasure to be with you. We were exploring in our last program the uh, very exciting and yet uh, sometime a topic not uh, kind of glanced over or glazed over, mm -hmm. maybe the case might be, uh, Isaiah's vision where he sees the seraph mm -hmm. uh, flying there in Isaiah 6, touching his lips. And we know that that was an order, a heavenly mm -hmm. being. But we were talking about the order of the seraphim and uh, would you tell us a little bit now about the order of the cherubim, what we can discern? Well, it's interesting. Isaiah is the prophet, say 700 B.C. is a good enough number, get you kind of oriented. Uh, and he's in the kingdom. The kingdom exists. It's, it's good and solid. And he's the prophet, and he gets the vision in Isaiah 6 of the seraphim and the throne room of God. The wrong room. Well, let's come forward a few years. Uh, over a century, about 595 B.C., okay. thereabouts. And there is another prophet. But Israel has been taken into captivity, mm. and uh, Judah's hanging on by a thread under the threat of the Babylonians. But Ezekiel is a prophet in captivity in the land roughly, we can say, Iraq, right. roughly Iraq. He's in exile. He's in exile. And he's down by a river one day called the River Chebar, or Chebar, C-H-E-B-A-R, mm -hmm. which actually is not a river, it's really an irrigation canal uh, because the land between the rivers, Mesopotamia between the rivers, mm. uh, had the Tigris on one side and the Euphrates, Euphrates on the water. other. Right. And, uh, of course, the, the Iraqis, back in those days, uh, well, it wasn't uh, Iraq, that was Babylonia, uh, they dug irrigation canals between right. the rivers, smart people, right. water the land. So Ezekiel is by one of these uh, canals. irrigation canals, called the River Chebar, probably a pretty good canal. And my Bible says 595 B.C., and that's close enough. <laughs> now, it came to pass in the 30th year, I'm reading Ezekiel 1, in the fourth month and the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the River Chebar, that I, the heavens were opened, and I saw the visions of God. Now, he's about to see a strange, strange vision. And as I read this, you might say, wow, this is really wild. But uh, there was another man who read it and didn't think it was quite as wild as we might. And that was the man who designed the landing gear for the lunar excursion module that went to the moon. And he designed it based on a reading of Ezekiel chapter 1. Okay? Wow. He um, actually was in his Bible while he was in his He was work. in his Bible Isn't when he did something? it. Okay. So here's the vision of glory. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Sheba, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked. And behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, mm. a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, the color of amber, out of the midst of fire. I wonder if this is where the people that did uh, uh, the movie got their idea. Now, in the movie, uh, you see, it's called Independence Day, mm. you see this cloud coming, mm. huge cloud with lightning going out of it, and then what's in the middle of the cloud hidden is a huge spaceship, okay? okay. I wonder if they got their idea from this. Counterfeits. I think, <laughs> I rather think they did. 
and also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance, and they had the likeness of man, mm. a man. Mm -hmm. And every one of them had four faces, and every one had four wings. Mm. Okay. That's interesting because the seraphim have six wings. These have four wings. And their feet were straight feet. Now, what do you mean by straight feet? Well, think of the feet of a horse. Think of the feet of a cow. Mm -hmm. Think of the feet of a dog. Right. Think of the feet of a duck. Hmm. Think of your feet, <laughs> straight feet. <laughs> they had straight feet or feet like a man. Hmm. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings, and their wings were joined one to another. They didn't turn when they went. Why? They didn't have to turn. They're facing the four points of the compass. Mm. Okay. They went straight forward. And as for the likeness of the faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion the, on the right side. They had, four had the face of an ox on the left side. They also had the face of an eagle. And thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another and covered their bodies. It was a wild vision, isn't it? Right. And they went, every one, straight forward. Whether the spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. Mm. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And like the appearances of lamps that went up and down among the living creatures, you might think of the experience Abraham had. And the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. And we'll stop there for this section. And probably a lot of people are saying, gulp, that's enough for one section. I'll wait for the second section and see what you have to say. And what we'll do is we'll talk about what these wheels of the, this creature looked like. World Missionary Evangelism, through its wide variety of mission outreach programs, is an evangelical force in developing nations and it all begins with native missionaries. Called by Christ to do His work, our native missionaries are first and foremost soul winners. Often facing hostile opposition, they have the courage to reach out in compassion to the lost, sharing the good news with those in their communities. But that is just the beginning of WME's evangelistic programs. World Missionary Evangelism reaches children through vacation Bible schools, and Christian schools. So even as we feed the hungry bodies of little ones, we also feed their souls. For almost six decades, WME has been building churches in both urban and rural areas. Most of these churches are used every day of the week and become beacons of light in the areas where they serve. Churches not only provide worship opportunities, but they also offer a community gathering point, education, child care, and even serve as feeding centers for the hungry. WME not only sponsors native missionaries, we train them. World Missionary Evangelism has local pastoral education programs for new missionaries and continuing education programs for those who have been in the field for years. WME also has Bible colleges that provide degree programs for those seeking a fuller knowledge of the Bible and Christian outreach. The evangelism in World Missionary Evangelism is not just a part of our name. It defines our mission, our focus, and is at the heart of everything we do. John, before our break, you were reading Ezekiel's vision in mm -hmm. chapter 1, Ezekiel chapter 1, like it just to continue mm -hmm. there. Well, let's continue. It's Ezekiel chapter 1, 
And we'll start at verse 15. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. And the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of beryl. And they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Mm. Now, if you go to the internet and look up cherubim or cherub, you'll see a bicycle called the cherubim, mm. in which there are wheels, geared wheels. Wow. Gear wheels, okay, to drive mm. the bicycle. So, of course, there are wheels in wheels. Right. They call it the cherubim. And they went. When they went, they went upon their four sides. And they didn't turn when they went. As for their rings, they were so high, they were dreadful. And the rings were full of eyes, mm. round about the four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Mm. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, thither they was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. The spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creatures was the color of the terrible crystal. Now that's a subject we're not going to get in, very interesting subject. The terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And under the firmament, were their wings straight, and one toward the other. Every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, mm. the voice of speech, as the noise of a host. When they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their head was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. It's interesting, different artists Trying down to. through the ages have tried to present this. That rendition of it. So if you go to the internet, uh, you'll see representations from a couple of centuries ago, where the wheels look like big wagon wheels. <laughs> now, if you look at modern representations where people are trying to uh, give form to this, artistic form to it, right. you'll see very different things. It, it's very entertaining, worth seeing. And I saw as the color amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upwards, from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire and had brightness round about as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, mm. so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. You want to know what the glory of the Lord looks like? <laughs> you, Ezekiel just told you. And when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of one that spoke. So this is a description of the cherub. Now, that doesn't exactly look like one of these little babies with wings on it that you see on murals. Well, Schofield makes this comment. He says, the living creatures are identical with the cherubim. These living creatures are identical with the cherubim. In other words, these living creatures are a description of the cherubim. And Schofield makes a interesting remark. He says, the subject is somewhat obscure, mm -hmm. to say the least. But from the position of the cherubim in Genesis at the gate of Eden and upon the cover of the Ark of the Covenant and in Revelation chapter 4, it's clearly gathered that the cherubim have to do with the vindication of the holiness of God against the presumptuous pride of sinful man who despite his sin would put forth his hand and take also the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Upon the ark, the covenant of one substance with the mercy seat, they saw the sprinkled blood, as the cherubim were over the ark. Right. And they saw the sprinkled blood 
which in type spoke of the perfect maintenance of the divine righteousness by the sacrifice of Christ. So the living creatures or cherubim, Schofield says, appear to be actual beings of an angelic order. In other words, he is saying the cherubim, this is not just a figurative thing. Mm -hmm. but these actually are, he says, appear to be li angelic beings. And he says the cherubim are not identical with the seraphim. And that is a fact. And the cherubim have to do with the holiness of God as outraged by sin, and the seraphim with the uncleanness of the people of God. So in other words, putting it this way, the cherubim relate to God. The seraphim relate to the people. Right. Very interesting. Cherubim relate to God. Seraphim relate to the people. Uh, so Schofield says that the passage in Ezekiel is, is highly figurative, but the effect of the revelation to the prophet of the Shekinah glory of God, very impactful. And Schofield goes on to say that such revelations are invariably connected with new blessings and with new service. Hmm. Well, we've just seen one uh, vision of the cherubim. Okay. Now, again, I heard my father preach for this in Seattle, Washington, for weeks, hmm. every night of the week, twice on Sunday, going into this scripture, some of the most fantastic preaching I've ever heard. <coughs> but, of course, he waited on the Lord. Sure. <laughs> Got a lot of revelation. Wheels within wheels, purposes within purposes. But... In chapter 28 of Ezekiel, we get a reference to the cherub that covers. Mm. So we might say to a particular cherub. And what we'll do, Walter, is we'll look at Ezekiel chapter 28 in the next section and talk about the cherub that covereth. Just as it is in America, the key to escaping poverty is education. World Missionary Evangelism has long recognized the importance of education and has emphasized it to the children that we save via our child sponsorship programs and food for hunger programs. We have established schools and these schools provide the basic education these children need to begin to escape the poverty that has ensnared their families, often for generations. What can you do to help us educate children? In many cases, we need new schools. World Missionary Evangelism also needs books and supplies. Children have to have school uniforms in many nations just to attend schools. And of course, there's the need for things like backpacks. How can you get involved? Find out the various costs of providing a child with things like school supplies, backpacks, a desk, a school uniform, or perhaps even an education at a university or college. An education builds a bridge between hopelessness and hope. It provides a future where dreams can be realized. It also positions a child to become a leader as an adult and in that leadership role, lift his family and his country out of the bonds of poverty. You can begin right now by supporting programs at World Missionary Evangelism that emphasize education. John, you were going to take us into Ezekiel 28, mm -hmm. and I think you were going to share a little bit uh, regarding the covering cherub, and uh, uh, Satan apparently had that role, and somehow, uh, as we looked, he lost it, but maybe you'll share a little more about the covering cherub. Well, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 28, you get a vision of a particular cherub. Okay. Lucifer. Mm. He is a cherub. And if you think about it, this has got to be a picture of Lucifer after 
the physical heavens and earth have been created. Okay. So we have the time before there was a physical and visible heavens and earth, but now you're getting a picture of Lucifer after the physical heavens and earth have been created. Mm. Now, Lucifer was present when the physical heavens and earth were created. And he was given charge of the physical heavens and earth. Uh, someone might say, well, I never heard this before, <laughs> because you never read the Bible before. And probably the preachers who were preaching to you were not concerned with this. Mm. And that's understandable. Mm. Uh, we are given the job of preaching the gospel of grace and of salvation. But uh, God doesn't tell us that we can't look into other parts of the scripture. Mm. So let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay. Okay. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord, Because your heart is lifted up, and you said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet you're a man and not God. Though you set your heart as the heart of God, Behold, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Now, immediately you've got to say, stop. <laughs> this can't be referring to the king of Tyre. No, the king of Tyre is a type mm -hmm. of the one to whom is it's being referred. Right. With your wisdom and understanding, you've gotten riches, I've gotten gold and silver under your treasure. By your great wisdom and by your traffic, there has increased your riches. My heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, because thou hast set thy heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore will I bring strangers upon you, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom. They shall defile thy brightness. And they shall bring you down to the pit and you shall die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But you shall be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. You'll die the death of the uncircumcised in the land of strangers. For I have spoken, it saith the Lord God. Now, here the Lord is talking to the king of Tyre. And many of the things that he said literally happened. Okay. to the king of Tyre. But the king of Tyre is a type. See, the great leaders of the earth, we have to face this. And we think of, of governments and political leaders as being, oh, the cream of the crop. Hmm. But in the book of Daniel, God says he'll bring the lowest of men and the most base of men and make politicians out of them. Hmm. You ever thought about that? Hmm. So instead of our politicians being wonderful, glorious, exalted leaders, God actually says they're the bottom rung. Mm. That's worth thinking about. I'm quite sure that will excite Washington, D.C. And then in verse 12, Ezekiel says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyre and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Now here, in a type of the king of Tyre, the Lord is speaking to Lucifer. And he says, you seal up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, gold. You, the workmanship of thy tablets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day you were created. Hmm. You are the anointed cherub that covereth, and I've set you so. You were upon the holy mountain of God, you have walked up and, up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And I'll tell you what I think the stones of fire are. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the multitude of thy merchandise you have filled the midst of, of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will dis destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up before, because of your beauty. You have corrupted thy wisdom by reason of your brightness. I will cast you to the ground. I will slay you before kings that they may behold you. 
You have defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, for the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I'll bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold you. And they shall know thee among the people, and they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at you, and you shall be a terror and never shall be any more. Mm. Well, with reference to the cherub that covereth in Ezekiel chapter 28, Bullinger, the great scholar Bullinger, German, said this, this can only be used of a supernatural being, mm. overshadowing and protecting the world that then was, or the Garden of Eden. He, he's saying this, look, look, these words can only apply to that person. And he said, walking, walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire, Bullinger says, refers to facts concerning which nothing further is revealed. Now, I'll say this, hmm. nothing further may have been revealed to Bullinger yeah. in his day and time. But as time marches on, the Word of God says, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure out, out of which a man brings forth things both old and new. So what I would like to do, and I've prayed much about this and studied much about it, is tell you what I think is meant by the term that Satan walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. We'll do it in the next program. World Missionary Evangelism began its work over 50 years ago with seven orphan children. Today, WME is working in developing countries around the world. Every day, WME programs are changing lives by meeting basic physical needs and saving souls by reaching out to the lost with the good news of Jesus Christ. You can partner with WME in a variety of ways to help those in desperate need. To learn more about WME's mission and work, please visit us on the web at www.wme.org. If you want to become a monthly sponsor for a child or native minister, support a particular project. If you would like to mail a donation, please send it to World Missionary Evangelism, P.O. Box 660800, Dallas, Texas 75266. You can make a world of difference in a precious life by contacting WME today. Thank you for your continued prayers and support of this ministry, and may God abundantly bless you.